Hey everybody, Joy here. It is Monday, and boy is it a Monday. <laughs> and I guess I better leave out the why it's a real Monday Monday here. And just had a marvelous Mother's Day yesterday, and I've been trying to do this tutorial now for over a week. <laughs> I've already filmed it twice and messed it up. The last time I tried to film, tried to film it, Luke was here, and oh my gosh, you just you can't do a YouTube video with Luke on the table. Let me tell you. So anyway, what I want to do is answer the question. One of my readers asked me, how do you take the fullness out of a neckline? She specifically said a V-neckline, but I would have to take it out of any neckline almost, unless I wore it all the way up to here. Even then, I have to lower it. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the one, two, three, four things that I do to every pattern, even sure-fit designs, every pattern. And then, you'll know everything I know except about the shoulders. Now, I've talked about the shoulders before. Do y'all know about the shoulders? When I went to visit my, my friend Deb in Missouri for the first time, she said, Oh, I'm glad to meet you. Will you draw my shoulders? <laughs> so what you have to do is you have to stand up against a wall, real normal-like. You can't hold your shoulders up here or droop them down there. you got to stand up straight against the wall. And then you have to have your husband or a friend draw from your neck around your shoulders and down a little ways to get your shoulder slope. And then what you'll find out, like in my case, is I have one shoulder half inch lower than the other one. So, I can take my patterns front and back, line up center front in the center, you gotta mark your center front on your paper, line up center front and raise it up, and you'll be able to see if the shoulder slope is right on the paper pattern, okay? One way you can do it. Okay. First thing I'm going to show you is how do you get the fullness out of the v-neck line. It's really very easy. Here's my little tiny pattern, and you can see the little cross. Let me get a pointer. There's the little cross. That means that's the apex. And here's the bust dart. The bust dart is always backed away from the apex. You don't want the bust dart all the way to the point of your, your bump. <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> so. When you make these adjustments I'm going to show you, we're going to be using the apex mark. Well, how do you know where the apex is? Take that paper pattern, you cut out the front of it, hold it up to the front of you, line up the center front, line up the shoulder, get a pencil or a marker or something and mark your apex. That is the best way to do it. Or, as in the SureFit designs, Glenda tells you, measure from the middle of your shoulder down to your apex, measure from the center of your chest over to your apex, and that's where you draw your cross mark, okay? So two ways to do it, probably 10 ways to do it. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to take the fullness out of the neckline. Now I can't show you my table because I can't hold the camera and, and work the table at the same time. I'm, I need to go shopping and buy myself some kind of contraption that you can remote control, stuff like that. But I don't have it yet. Okay, so we'll use orange. How about we use orange? If we can get the orange to draw. Hope somebody invents a pen and write on the first time sometime. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw it on the table and I'll pick it up and show it to you. Also, hold the garment up to your neck. Figure out what part does this gape the most in? Gap the most, gape the most. Um, usually it's about one third of the way up. It's more, it's more close down. It's like about right here on me. It may be up here on you, you know. It might work no matter where you put it. I don't know for sure. Okay, so we're gonna draw a line from where that V-neck is too full, and we're gonna draw the line to the apex. Then we're going to draw a line from the apex down through the center of the bust dart. Okay? Let me see. I hope you guys can see this good enough. I'm going to use a, a fat blue marker, and that way you can see it better, okay? Draw a line from the apex that you've drawn on your pattern through the center of the bust dart, and draw a line from the apex up to where it is too full for you in the neckline. Doesn't matter if it's round, a U, a V, or whatever it is, okay? So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut to, but not through, that cross that 
represents your apex, okay? So, probably better if you use some scissors, because every time I use a rotary cutter, I cut right through it. So we're going to cut really close to it, but not through it, because we're going to make a hinge out of the apex. The point in the center of the apex is going to be a hinge. See here, hinge duty? You can hinge it both ways. See? So what we're going to do is cross over at the neck where it's too big, and that will cause it to open up more in the bust dart. So we're transferring the fullness of the neckline over here to the bust dart. I have no idea in the world why it works. I just know it does. So then, we're going to take a piece of tape, and you guys can probably find all this stuff on YouTube. That's where I learned a lot of stuff. Well, I've taken all kinds of classes and everything else. And so then, hold on, let me get some paper. You get a piece of paper. Oh, wait, that's got addresses on it. We can't use that one. Very bad. Very bad. Okay. So we're going to take a piece of paper, and we're going to put it there in that slit that we just created. Okay? Back behind that, and we're going to fill it in. Because that's going to be the real deal bus start. Only what you need to do is cut it as wide as the whole bus dart. You need to cut it wide. Because you need this outside part to make your new bus dart extension out there on the edge. You know, out here on the edge it always makes this little point thing. And so you want to make sure you have enough paper to do that. Okay? So I've crossed it over at the neck. I've opened it up at the bus. So now what do we do? Well, now what do we do is we fix the side of the bus dart and we redraw the neckline. So, take another piece of paper. It just needs to be little. And add it there to where the neckline notch is. Just stick it there anywhere. And then you take your French curve styling ruler and you put it on that neckline and you simply redraw it. It's so, so, so easy. Let me see if I can figure it out for you. Now, don't look at my 85 chins when I'm bending over like this, okay? All right, there it is. If you can see that orange line that I drew, those are pretty bright lights, so. And now I'm just going to cut on the orange line that I drew to make a new neckline. Okay, so it's a new neckline, but it's got, I usually take a half inch out of mine, and so I cross it a quarter. If you cross it a quarter, it takes out half an inch. Is that right? Yeah, because it, it takes out a half, uh, part here and part here, so it's a total of a half inch. So, cross it over a quarter inch, redraw the curve, and don't forget, whatever you do to your neckline, you have to do to your facing. Your facing has a neckline too, remember? So you'll have to redo it. So how do I fix the dart now? You see the top and bottom lines on the dart? The top and the bottom line. We are going to fold it on the bottom one. We're going to fold it to the front. See, folding it to the front. And then we're going to fold it up to the top dart line. The new dart line, not the old dart line. So we're going to do like that. See now, I've got a dart in here. How cool is that? Look, it's a little tiny blouse with a bus dart. It's so cute. So, then you cut a straight line. Cut it straight, right here, where you just put that paper. So now it looks like it's straight. But when you open up that bus dart, it's not going to be straight. So let me tell you something, if you don't put that little extra point out there, you're going to have one big mess in your blouse when you sew it together. See there how it's got that point sticking out now? So now I have a smaller neckline and I have a bigger bust dart. Now, it's still not done. You know why it's still not done? Because we need to redraw the bust dart with its dot back away from the bust point. And it's kind of already there, it's just a little bit bigger. So we're going to draw back in the center. And then we're going to 
this is going to be <coughs> so close to the way it was. I don't want to draw with this heavy marker. Let me see here. Because I don't want a heavy marker on my ruler. That's why. Okay. So you may have to use your imagination here. This is orange. So we're going to have our bus dart there to where that blue dot is and draw the lines. Start here with your line for your bus dart and draw it over here to your point where your bus dart stops. Okay? And that's your new bus dart and that's how you do the front. Now, other than lowering the shoulder on my low shoulder and cutting the armhole out lower on the right, I always do it on the right. I cut the pattern out the same on both sides. Then I lower the shoulder on the right and I lower the armhole right here on the right. I don't know if you guys want me to do that or not. So now, let me show you what I do to the back. That's how you reduce the front. I'm going to show you how you reduce the back. I not only get gapping in the front through here, I get gapping through this too. I didn't make this blouse. It just happens to fit me halfway decent. It's, it's a little large. <laughs> But I also get gapping back here. You don't have a bus dart in the back, but you can still take in that fullness. But instead of drawing your fix-it line to a bus dart point, you're going to draw your fix-it line over to the sleeve hole. I learned this one from Peggy Sagers. Okay? So this is how we're going to fix the neck. Let me see. I don't think it matters where you take it. Okay, so you draw a line from the neck over to the armhole. Then you cut through but not to. And you start up here at the back neck and you cut over to that armhole. Doesn't matter if there's a seam or not. <coughs> if there's a seam, oh look, I just cut it off. Joy, pay attention. It's through, but not to. What is wrong with you? Okay, so now I've cut that. So now the back neck opening is on a hinge and opens and shuts. We're just gonna cross it over. I should have brought a glass of water in here. We're just gonna cross it over. <coughs> I cross it over about a quarter of an inch. Then you have to redraw the back neckline because now it's a jog. And I think my battery's about to die, guys. So I'm gonna pause here. Okay, I'm back. The battery was going dead. I, I'm beginning to think the world just does not need this tutorial. <laughs> this is the third time I've tried to do it. So anywhere there's the back. And we're going to redraw the neck with our designing stylus. I don't know if these actually <laughs> work on <laughs> these itty bitty teeny patterns. And you know that over here on the seam line it has to be a 90 degree angle. Otherwise, when you cut it out, you're going to have a really funny looking mess. You might have to cut it down a little bit. Okay? So you just re cut your neckline. See? Didn't change the shoulder. Shoulder's still the same. Now, I also have a round back. I don't know if you can tell. Everybody has a round back from what I can tell. <laughs> I don't know anybody I've helped sew with that doesn't have a round back, even young people. So, let me show you how you do that, okay? Again, you have to make a line. We're going to take fullness. We're going to add fullness. We're going to add fullness to the center back. Really easy to do. You just draw a line from the center back over there to that armhole. It's so easy, you guys. Now you may or may not need any of these. I'm just showing you what all I do to every pattern I make. Okay, so I drew the line. Where do you need it? You need it where your back is roundest. If it's way up here by your neck, do it up high. If it's down here by your shoulder blades, do it in that area. I think mine's my shoulder blade area. So we're going to open it up all the way over to the back. Another hinge. Yeah. This time, instead of closing it, we're going to open it. Open it. So, let me get a different color piece of paper. <coughs> Pardon my coughing, guys. I am sorry. 
happens to me when I talk a lot. So that would be all the time of the day. <laughs> all right, so we're going to open that up. How much do we open it? It depends. Now, Philly and I did a video on round back correction years ago, and you can find that there in my videos someplace. How you take the rulers and you measure your back straight and then you measure your back on a curve and the difference is how wide you need to make this. Mine has been 5 8 inch for years. But the last blouse I made has these bizarre wrinkles in it and I think I need mine bigger now. So it just depends. Everybody's different. Okay, so we've added the paper in the slip. We've opened it up. See that arrow right there? That's how much we've opened it up. In real life, my next one's going to be one full inch. And I might make two slits and do two one halves. So we're going to cut that off. It's going to be rounded. We're just going to cut that off like it is. A little bit rounded. Now, the next thing I have to do is a sway back. I don't know if I can show you my sway back or not, but I had a real sway back where my back just stops. <laughs> and if I don't do the sway back correction, I end up with a big pool of fabric right here. So, instead of ending up with a big pool of fabric right there, I'm going to take it out of the paper pattern. And that way, it'll be taken out of the fabric. So you come down here, around your waist. I do it a little bit above my waist. And you draw another line. These are all done the same way. You draw a line. There's a line from the center back over to the side seam. Doesn't look like I got it too straight. Of course, this pattern's so crooked now, <laughs> it's straight enough. So this time we're going to cross over again. How much do we cross over? Start with one half of an inch. If that still leaves a puddle in your back, make it bigger. I do five eighths of an inch is how much I do. Okay? So now we have crossed over there. So, what used to be a straight back that you placed on the fold of the fabric, so you didn't have a seam down the center back, what used to be straight is now a roller coaster. <laughs> do you have to have a center back seam? You can. You can just add 5 8 inch to that, cut it out, and it will sew really nice but you'll have a center back seam. If you don't want a center back seam, you can still cut it on the fold. You just place the two points, the top and, those, and the bottom point of your pattern. I don't know if this is going to show very good. The top and the bottom point, play like this is the fold of the fabric here on the side. And you just line up the bottom point right there on the fold and the top point right there on the fold. You're going to end up with the pattern going in a little bit here and the pattern's going to stick out a little bit here from that round back correction but it doesn't matter maybe you can see in the back how it sticks out it doesn't matter it's a tiny little space it's extra room back there anyway i usually have extra room going that direction too okay so now you have a sway back a round back taking fullness out of the neck edge and i've taken fullness out of the v-neck in the front and we've made the bust dart bigger by taking that out okay so whoever asked me that question that is your answer and i'm sure if you'll youtube sway back correction round back correction you'll find a bunch of people doing it okay so i'm going to let you go now because i'm about to lose my voice and let me know if you want to know anything else bye